Deal or no deal at 4.15. First, Channel 4 is proud to present the brand new series of Countdown. A new look, new chairs, and our new presenters, Jeff Stelling and Rachel Riley. It's cold and it's damp and it's miserable and the electricity bill and the phone bill and the gas bill have all arrived on the same day and it's still six months to the summer holidays. But are we downhearted? Yeah. No, we are not because Countdown is back. Yeah. And I know, I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, who the heck am I? But <laughs> Stelling is the name, six consonants, two vowels and in truth, the words I'm more used to are foul, Penalty, referee, blind as a bat. <laughs> I'm not the only new face here today. Say hello to Rachel Riley. Hi, Ben. Hi. And don't worry, you haven't tuned into Beauty and the Beast by mistake. <laughs> How are you feeling, Rachel? Excited. It's like Christmas all over again. When did you first realise that you were amazing with maths? I think my mum decided for me in the womb. Oh, yeah. Right. So, did you sleep last night? Did you go to bed thinking of numbers games? Maths dreams, every night. Yeah, you get, I had George you got... Clooney with me to help last night. Oh, in the right. dreams, okay. obviously, <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, you're looking good, so <laughs> really enjoy it. Uh, look, we're a couple of new faces, and we've got a sparkling new set as well here. But rest assured that this is the same countdown that you've grown to love over the years. And what a start we have for you, because over the next three weeks, we have our champion of champions competition. So all the people you're going to see over the next three weeks have been here before. They're all winners. It's going to be of a fantastically high standard. And this is a straight knockout, so it's going to be really cutthroat. Let's meet our first two contestants. First of all, James Hurrell, who's an Octa champ and a quarterfinalist from Series 57. He's from Carn in Wiltshire, and he is uh, a financial analyst, so he's been pretty busy in recent months, I would imagine. <laughs> now, look, you are a lifelong supporter of Plymouth Argyle. I think that's a very brave thing to admit. <laughs> and your ambition is to see them play in the uh, Premier League, so you're expecting a very long life, are you? <laughs> <laughs> One day, you never know. Hmm. If Hull City can get there, then uh, I don't see any reason why Plymouth can't. OK, James is up against David O'Donnell. Uh, hi, David. David, a star and champion of Series 58. He's played 11 games so far, and he is currently undefeated. He's from Omar in County Tyrone. He has an MA in political theory and is currently working as an administrator at his local college. David almost didn't make his series finals at all as he had a little problem with his passport. What happened, David? Um, well, I, I assumed I knew where it was, so I didn't bother about it. And then the night before, um, I went to get the passport and it just wasn't there. Wasn't there a story about the picture as well that was refused? Oh. Saying well, this is, this is, I had to get a new passport, obviously, mm. so um, I, I brought my pictures in. And they wouldn't accept my pictures because they said um, they didn't look human. <laughs> <laughs> Very harsh. OK, let's meet our uh, guest today. I, I tell you what, he could make me fall about in tears of laughter with the use of just a three-letter word, or is it a, a two-letter word? I'm not quite sure. He was, of course, Manuel in Faulty Towers. He may be from Barcelona, but he's with us today. Uh, Andrew Sachs, good afternoon to you. Thank you. So that word I was talking about was que. Yes. Three two letters. letters or three? Three. Three letters, OK. Right. And a question, and an exclamation mark at the beginning and the end. <laughs> Um, and amongst all these new faces today, it's great that there's a, an old head in Dictionary Corner. And I use the uh, phrase old head metaphorically, of course. It's uh, Susie Dent. Afternoon to you, Susie. Hello, <laughs> This must all be a bit strange to you as well, all these it newcomers, these interlopers. Well, I'm fantastic new set, but welcome to you and Rachel. I'm going to have a lot of fun. Thanks. Of course, you, you've been away for a few weeks yourself. Do you get rusty? While you're away? Someone gave me for Christmas a mini dictionary for my glove compartment. They obviously thought I was very sad. But um, no, you do. It's very difficult to turn off in my job because you're always, you know, listening out for new words. So, but Rusty, I do get. I have very bad days, as you'll see. <laughs> well, we're hoping you're going to hold our hand today. We certainly <laughs> okay. are. So let's press on. It's time to play Countdown. 
Let's have our first letters round, and David, it's your first choice. Okay. Uh, good afternoon, Rachel. Hi, David. Uh, a vial, please. Start with E. And a vial. O. And a vial. Another E. And a consonant, please. S. And consonant. R. Uh, consonant. Another S. And a uh, consonant, please. Another R. And I'll try a uh, consonant. Another R, lovely. And one more, please. And uh, another consonant, please. And the last one, hopefully not an R. H. Well, it should be easy, shouldn't it? Find a word with three R's and two E's and two S's in it. <laughs> uh, for the first time, it's my turn to say, here's the countdown clock. Stars. James, what have you got? I've got a six. Six. David? Dodgy seven. A dodgy seven. Well, let's have the six first of all. Uh, errors. Errors? Okay. Um, reshoes, as in to reshoe a horse. As in a blacksmith. Let me have a quick look. Um, it would seem to make absolute sense. Just have to just always um, err on the side of caution with the rewords. It's not in, I'm afraid, David. It's not there. That's very bad luck. All right. Errors takes it then. Six point start for James. Well done to you, James. He's got six points on the board and uh, it's his choice of letters. Hi, Rachel. Hi, James. Uh, can I start with a vowel, please? You can. I. And another one, please. And A. And another. Another A. And another. O. And a consonant, please. And N. And another. C. And another. Another N. And another one, please. And M. And um, a final consonant. And a final N. Time starts now. Okay, David? Uh, just six. Six, James? Six as well. Okay, James, what's your six? Uh, maniac. Maniac, yeah. yeah. And uh, I've got the same word. Same word. Okay, anything else, guys, in Dictionary Corner? Uh, just variation on the same theme. There's manioc as well, M A N I O C, and that's cassava, which is a type of flour or starch used in food. Okay. Uh, six points apiece in that one then, so James has the advantage, leads by 12 points to six, but David, it's your choice of letters. And the file, please? Start with U. And um, vial. E. Vial. I. Consonant, please. N. Consonant. X. And um, consonant. S. And another consonant. And F. And a uh, consonant, please. T. And I'll finish with a consonant. Finish with another T. And your time starts now. James. Uh, just got? a six. Six. David? Likewise. Just six. a six. What's your six, David? Infuse. Infuse. James? And, uh, unites. 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 Excellent. Yes, very good. I've got uh, faints, not in the 
keel over, but you know in football where you drop your shoulder and you faint to go one way? Oh, F-E-I-N-T-S, brilliant. Mm, that is, is there. Well done. Five. Okay. Very good. Uh, on to round four. Uh, James, your choice of letters. Uh, start with a vowel, please. So to start, E. And another one. A. And another, please. E. And a fourth. I. And a consonant, please. L. And another one. D. And another. And P. And another. Another P. And a final consonant, please. To finish. S. And here's the countdown clock. David. Seven. James? Seven as well. Okay, James, what's your seven? Pleased. Okay. David? Slut. Dictionary corner? Applied. Very good. Another seven. All for sevens. Yes. Fantastic. So it's David 19, James 25. It's our first numbers game. David, your choice. Um, okay. Um, can I please have four large numbers and any oh, two of your choice? Oh, I thought you might do that. Of course you can. Thank you very much. Okay. So, champions, the first numbers game for me. Start with a three, ten, and no surprises, 50, 75, 25, 100, and the target, 503. Very nice. <laughs> 503. I might manage this. Here's the clock. It's like coming on as a cup final substitute and having an open goal with your first touch of the ball, really, isn't it? Uh, 5.03, fellas. Yep. Yeah. Just about yep. Uh, 5.03, shall we just see how uh, Rachel would have got it? <laughs> yeah, I think the numbers gods have been kind today. Um, right, here we go. 50 times by the 10. We got 500 and add on the 3. <laughs> I didn't want to insult you chaps by asking you your method. <laughs> OK, uh, James has 35 points and David has 29. Um, let's go to our first uh, tale from Dictionary Corner, shall we? What have you got for us, Andrew? For the benefit of uh, those who seem to know me only as a Spanish waiter, I thought I might introduce myself as a bona fide actor, but not in, not in my own words. I'm far too modest for that. I'll use those of a very popular... Uh, uh, comedian called Billy Bennett from the 1920s who wrote his own monologues and this is one of them called My Mother Doesn't Know I'm on the Stage. It goes like this. I'm cherishing a secret in my bosom about the dreadful stage life that I lead. I've heard it said that pros, that's professionals, I've heard it said that pros are decent people but according to the papers that I read both actresses and actors are dead wrong -uns whether from the palace or the hippodrome. Now, you folks out here know that I'm an actor, but I never breathe a word of it at home. Now, I'll tell you exactly why. It's because of my mother, my dear mother, whom I adore. You see, my mother doesn't know that I'm an actor. It would break her poor old heart if she found out. Uh, she knows I am a deserter from the Scottish Fusiliers. She knows I stole a blind man's can. That got me seven years. She knows I am connected to a gang of West End pests and the police have had me twice inside the cage. She knows I mix with ladies who've had a shady past, but my mother doesn't know I'm on the stage. Sometimes she sees the powder on my clothing and then it's such a nuisance to explain. If she thought it was powder, she'd go crazy. 
So, of course, I have to tell her it's cocaine. <laughs> well, that makes it all right, you see. The day she met me out with Gladys Cooper, oh, what a star. What a beauty. You're aware of her, of course. She's a friend of mine. Yes, the day she met us, she started screaming murder and police and would have caused a dreadful scene in public. So I told her that my girl was Crippen's niece. <laughs> oh, you see, <laughs> yes, I, I, she, because my mother doesn't know I'm on the stage. I have to have respect for her old age. She knows I'm a bigamist, a blaggard and a crook. But thank heaven she don't know I'm on the stage. Thank you so much. Oh, no, please. <laughs> Mr. Chairman, please take over. <laughs> Thank you very much, Andrew. I think after that we just need a momentary pause, don't we? It's our first tea time teaser. Quite most appropriate words as well. The word clue is new Rachel. And it's all about starting again. It's all about starting again. See you in a minute. <laughs> Now, our volunteers here are going to try and lower that all-important cholesterol level with the help of Flora Proactive. But did you know that a healthy level is five or below? I don't exercise. I've been sitting, you know, watching TV. I also think we need to take this seriously. I don't eat cakes and biscuits, but I do quite like my bacon. And that's where Flora Proactive comes in. These foods are enriched with plant sterols, clinically proven to lower cholesterol, which could keep your heart healthy. Now they're going to introduce Flora Proactive into their diets every day over the next three weeks. Just three portions a day of the yogurt, milk or spread can help reduce their cholesterol. Why don't you take up the challenge as well? We've got a race to run, believe it or not. But you can eat well and get into shape. Try steaming beautiful chicken fillets with courgettes, red peppers and coriander. Pop it in the oven. All under two pounds a head from Aldi. And the money you save can go towards some fancy new running kit. Hey, where's Bill? I'm really not sure about this, Ready? Yeah! Aldi. Don't change your lifestyle. Change your supermarket. Because I was avoiding different foods because of sensitivity, I wasn't enjoying foods that I like. Bit into this chocolate and then it occurred. I obviously went to the dentist. It was just a twinge and I just thought that's natural because you don't have anything to compare against. I tried Sensodyne. I've been using Sensodyne for about seven months now. I can eat anything without having to worry about my sensitive teeth. I've just been using it as a daily toothpaste and I'm so used to it now, it's just like I wouldn't buy anything else. Simple as that, really. It's not, it's not rocket science. <laughs> When you stop noticing a fragrance, the freshness fades. AmbiPure 3 Volution is the first air freshener with three complementary fragrances that change every 45 minutes. Renew the freshness with AmbiPure 3 Volution again and again and again. AmbiPure. Why not enjoy the three complementary fragrances of AmbiPure Puress 3 Volution? Light, gentle and allergen reduced. AmbiPure Puress. Fragrances that care. At Kenko, we don't just grow great coffee. We also help coffee workers grow their local communities with the help of the Rainforest Alliance. Now, Kenko chooses beans from Rainforest Alliance certified farms. Kenko, growing great coffee and more. For every dog who gets adopted, there are some that are still waiting. But when you buy any pedigree product, we'll make a donation to help dogs like Misha find loving homes. The Pedigree Adoption Drive. Because every dog deserves a loving home. These are the antioxidants in a glass of orange juice. But amazingly, a glass of Welch's purple grape juice has twice the natural antioxidant level. No way! No? <laughs> Watch this. Fantastic. Brilliant. Welch's purple grape juice. Packed with twice the natural antioxidant level of orange juice. Now also available as a smoothie.
great British food fight. New season starts with Big Chef Takes on Little Chef next Monday at 9 on 4. It's all about starting again. It was, of course, relaunch, the answer to our first tea time teaser. It's our first champion of champions heat. At the moment, James has 35 and David has 29. Here's our next letters game. James, your choice. I'll start with a vowel, please. For you, James, E. And another one. Another E. And another. Another E. <laughs> Uh, preferably not another E, but a vowel, please. A vowel. I. And a consonant. L. And another. F. And another. T. And a fourth. D. And a final consonant, please. Final B. Just the one I there. Can't see a lot with that. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Here's the countdown clock. David, what have you got? Just a six. six. James? I'll stick with a six. Ah, you tempted, weren't you? Go and let's have the six that you're sticking with. Um, edible. Edible? Yeah, David? Uh, belief. Dictionary corner? You can, there is a seven there, actually. Um, yeah. Fleeted. Uh, and to fleet is to move or pass quickly. Um, so a variety of expressions fleeted across his face. Uh, that's there for seven. Okay, thanks very much indeed. Uh, James has 41. Uh, David has 35, but uh, David, your choice this time. Um, a vial, please. So to start, O. And another vial. E. And a vial. Another E, our favourite. We must be running out of those. Consonant. N. Consonant. D. Consonant. K. And uh, a consonant, please. Z. Um, uh, another consonant, please. And C. And, and the final one. And I've, I've finished with a consonant. Finished with an S. And your 30 seconds starts now. and C's. Not the easiest bunch, were they? Uh, David, what have you got? Six again. <laughs> OK. Uh, James? I'll go for seven. Seven. Let's see the six first. Oh, second. Sorry. Second. Sorry. <laughs> and uh, the seven? Encodes. Encodes. To put something into code is to encode it. Very good Fantastic. indeed. Fantastic. Anything better than that? That's quite a nice one. Snecked. Snecked. It sounds like a very northern word to me. Um, and in fact, it is Scottish and a northern <laughs> English dialect. It's to close or fasten a door or window with a latch. OK. Thank you very much indeed. Uh, it's David 35, James 48, James the Plymouth Argyle fan. Pilgrims, they're called, aren't they? They are, yes. Yeah, you're making good progress at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And it's your selection of letters, James. Uh, vowel, please. E for you, James. And another. U. And another. I. And a fourth. O. And a consonant, please. C. And another one. T. And another one. R. And another one. M. And a final consonant. Final R. Here's the countdown clock.
James? Just six. David? Um, I'll stick with the seven. Stick with the seven. Okay, let's have the six first. It's not a very nice one, but rectum. <laughs> <laughs> okay, the seven, David? Um, mortis. Mortis. Mortis, yes, very good. Um, as in mortis and tenon, you can spell it with a C or an S. Uh, anything else at all, Susie? Um, yeah, there is an eight there, actually. Um, courtier. Uh, courtier in the Royal Court. C O U R T I E R. Okay. <laughs> On to our, our next letters round, and uh, David, it's your choice. Um, vial, please. To start, A. Vial. I. Vial. E. Consonant, please. G. Consonant. W. Um, another consonant, please. T. Uh, consonant. P. And a consonant. R. And I'll finish with a consonant, please. And to finish, Y. And the time starts now. Okay, uh, David, what have you got? Uh, seven. James? Just six. Just six. Let's have the six. Uh, earwig. David? A wiretap. Oh. Just absolutely double check that <laughs> it is one word, um, but I'm pretty hopeful. Yep, it's there. Wiretapping is the practice of connecting a listening device to a telephone to monico monitor conversations secretly. Wiretap is brilliant. Well done. <laughs> uh, Susie. Uh, been digging into the origins of some nice <laughs> words, have we? Yes, just I thought I'd concentrate on some new words, some words for the noughties, as, as we call them. Um, we've heard very much about the carbon footprint this century, um, and reduce and reuse and recycling has, has been the mantra, really, as we've finally woken up to the modern, wasteful life that we lead. But some of us would, ignore, would, would insist that we've ignored the reducing and reusing bit, and we've concentrated entirely on recycling. So the new word, and possibly the new mantra, is going to be pre-cycling. Not recycling, but pre-cycling, which is simply thinking more carefully about the products that you buy and don't buy them in all this packaging. It sounds very simple, and probably a lot of people have been doing it for ages. But I think pre-cycling as a word is likely to take off. And forget footprint, pre-cycling is where we're going now. OK, thanks very much indeed. On to uh, round 10. It's very close. David has 49 points and James has 48. James, it's a uh, numbers game and it's your choice. Can I have six more numbers, please? From anywhere, James? Uh, wherever you like. Wherever. Oh, thank you. Right. One. OK, six small ones. Three. Seven. Nine. Six. 10 and 1. Nice range. And target 690. Uh, 690 then. Let's see if we can get it. Here's the clock. They're both sitting here grinning like Cheshire cats. I expect they've both got it. Uh, James? Yeah, 690. David? 690. Okay, David, will you tell us the 690? Yeah, nine sevens are 63. They are indeed. Nine times seven is 63. Plus the six. Plus the six is 69. And then multiply by 10. By the 10. Very good. You can see why you're a champion. <laughs> <laughs> and the same? The same way, yeah. All right. OK, well, it's still mighty close, isn't it? Uh, David, 59. James? 58, we're going to take a short break. Here's our second tea time teaser. And the words are clad sign. The clue, tell somebody off. They're in very hot water.
Which mineral foundation is now the UK's number one? True Match Minerals from L'Oreal. 95% from minerals. Imperfections appear reduced for a flawless coverage that's gentle on skin. No perfume, no preservatives. Tested under dermatological control. True Match Minerals from L'Oreal Paris. Because you're worth it. Looking out on the morning rain Because what you eat shapes your life. Alpro Soya is naturally low in saturated fat. And that's got to be good for everybody. Alpro Soya. Make your body a better place to live. Because corn mince is low in fat and high in protein, <laughs> it helps keep you light on your feet. Corn, eat clever! At the Cooperative Funeral Care, we've been part of the community for over 50 years and seen generations of families through difficult times. We're there when you need us, day and night. When it comes to arranging a funeral, many people are unaware of the choices available. We'll guide you through every step of the way, offering you support, care and peace of mind when you need it most. We pride ourselves on being open and honest and giving you the funeral that's personal to your family. For more information, help and advice, or to ask about a funeral prepayment plan, call the Cooperative Funeral Care on 0800 612 8882. It's always the perfect time for a short break at Centre Parks. Call 0844 875 2020 for daytimes and nighttimes. For first times, fun times and once-in-a-lifetimes. To book or for your free DVD and brochure, visit centreparks.tv or call now on 0844 875 2020. Looking out on the morning rain I used to feel Because what you eat so shapes your life. Alpro Soya is naturally low in saturated fat that's got to be good for everybody. Alpro Soya. Make your body a better place to live. ING Direct. Saving feels good. Love film? Oh, hell yeah. We send them, you watch them, then mail them back to us when you're finished. It's that simple. That's good. Go to lovefilm.com. I told the truth as far as I could, but I didn't tell the whole truth. Paul Burrell, What Really Happened, Thursday at 10 on 4. Yeah, tell somebody off there in very hot water, our tea time teaser. The answer was scalding. Well, we have a red-hot contest at the moment. David has 59 and James has 58. On with the letters, games. David, your selection. Um, a vial, please. A. A vial. I. And a third vial. U. Consonants. R. Consonants. L. Another consonant, please. N. And a, a consonant. Another R. Um, I'll have a vowel this time, please. O. And I'll finish with a consonant, please. A final T. And here is the countdown clock.
Uh, James, how many have you got? Seven. Seven. David? Seven as well. Okay, should we hear your seven first, David? Uh, Rear night. Rear night, yeah. Rear night. Same. Same. Yeah. Yes, I think we've been watching Countdown, haven't you? Because it's a very countdown word. It's an American word, actually. Obviously, something that's cancelled because of rain is a rain out. Uh, it is getting down to the nitty gritty, isn't it? Um, 11 rounds, David 66, James 65. Almost impossible to separate them. Here's the next letters game. And uh, James, your turn. Have a vowel, please. You can, James. O. And another one. A. And another one. U. And a fourth one, please. O. And a consonant. B. And a another one. And V. And a third, please. N. And a fourth. D. And a final consonant, please. And S. 30 seconds starts now. James? A seven. David? A seven as well. Okay. Uh, James, let's have your seven first. A bounds. A bounds. Yep. I've got a feeling, Susie, you can't do any better than that, can you? <laughs> no, a bounds, a bounds, literally. You haven't yeah. got anything more, I'm afraid. Okay. <laughs> seven points apiece. Uh, 73 to 72. And uh, David, it's your choice. Um, vial, please. To start, E. And another vial. I. And a third vowel. O. Consonant, please. H. And another consonant. D. And a consonant. T. And a consonant. S. And uh, another consonant, please. M. And I'll finish with a, a consonant, please. A final L. Here comes the clock. Okay, James. Seven. David? Um, I'll try an eight. Let's have the seven first. Uh, hostile. Hostile. And the eight you're going to try, David? Uh, ethmoids. E T H M O I D S. Could you re spell that for me, David? It's um, E T H M O I D S. Do you know it's there? I've never heard of it. It's brilliant. It's an anatomical word, a square bone at the root of the nose. David has the advantage, 81 points to 72. OK, on to the uh, numbers game. It's a key numbers game as well. And, James, it's your choice. Uh, I'll go one large, please. One large and five small. Thank you very much. Five. So we'll start with three. One. Six. Five. Ten. And the large, 75. Target, 554. Okay, David. Yeah, I think a 554. Five, uh, James? Yeah, 554. Five, uh, should we hear your 554 five, then version of it, David? 
And 10 minus 3 is 7. 10 minus 3 is 7. Plus 1 is 8. Plus 1 gives you 8. 75 minus 5 is 70. 75 minus the 5. Equals 70. Eight 70s are 560. They are indeed 560. And you've got a 6 left over. Add on the 6. No, you don't. You take away the 6. Oh, oh 6 dear. to you. Yeah. Oh, dear. <laughs> Very good. James, same method? No, different. No. Um, started the same. 10 minus 3 is 7. Yep. 10 minus 3 is 7. Uh, times 75. Times 75 equals 525. Five. Uh, 6 times 5 is 30. 6 times 5 equals 30. Add that on and then take Add the one on. away. And you take away the one, yes you do. <laughs> Very good. Well done. 10 points each. David has 91 points. James has 82. It's the first of our Champion of Champions heats. And it's come to this, I can hardly bear to watch. Fingers on the buzzers because this is a critical countdown conundrum. Please reveal today's countdown conundrum. Is it cortisone? Cortisone? Let's have a look. Oh. 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 Fantastic. Your speciality conundrums in, are they? It's the David? worst part of it. It's the bit I hit, really hit. I can't stand them. It took you at least a second to get that. <laughs> yeah, that's really not <laughs> usual. Uh, what it means is that our first Champion of Champions heat has been won by David, 101 point. Uh, James has 82, so many congratulations to David and commiserations to James. Uh, James, I have to tell you that you will take away our glass countdown clock. Ooh. Which is Thank going to be very useful for you because you can count the minutes till Plymouth Argyle win promotion to the Premier League. <laughs> <laughs> and the good news is it does come with a lifetime guarantee. <laughs> <laughs> Congratulations to our winner, David, who's uh, into the quarterfinals. He'll be back for that a week on Thursday. Uh, thanks very much indeed, Andrew and uh, Susie. Andrew, uh, do you have a favourite episode of Faulty Towers? Uh, you're the one about the hamster. Because I it was a rat. Not... What? It was a rat. It was a filigree Siberian hamster. <laughs> <laughs> uh, because I had more to do in that episode than any other. Oh, I, I love gourmet night. Was I've never looked at duck in the same <laughs> way ever since. <laughs> Fantastic. Um, Rachel, how have you enjoyed it? Oh, it's great. I've got some very, very good contestants here, so I didn't have to do much work today, did I? What would your friends at Oxford University say? Oh, they're all very excited. Hopefully they'll have it on in the bar and they'll be watching every day. They you better be. Don't drink, do they, <laughs> these universities? Oh, good coffee. Lord. Coffee in the bar, mm. yeah. OK, well, we'll see David a week on Thursday. Well done, him. Commiserations to James. Hope you enjoyed it. Bye-bye now. Jeff and Rachel back tomorrow at 3.25 and the return of another new series, Woken's Perfect Recall at 5. And that's followed at 5.30 by yet another new series, Celebrity Come Dine With Me, featuring Rodney Marsh, Abby Titmus and Paul Ross. Coming up next here on 4, it's Deal or No Deal.